Isn't it amazing what people throw away? Like, for instance, this stainless steel I've been using for a table cover. I found that in the trash, and it's like five millimeters thick. It's amazing stuff. Can't believe throwing that away. I went to the local recycling center, the one that I have kind of like a backdoor deal with, and walked in the back door. Haven't been there a while, but they recognized me like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. I was like, cool. Haven't seen you in a while either. And I offered them, I grabbed, grabbed a bunch of stuff, and I offered 20 bucks for it, and they're like, cool. Sounds good. So I got Pokemon Pinball, bag full of random electronic stuff. I didn't even look at it. I just saw it in the trash, and I was like, I want that. But the main things are this Hickok Model 217 semiconductor analyzer, which is pretty neat. I didn't really look at these. I just wanted the case because it's like, I don't care if how cool they are. I know that I want it just for the case because like this has like, oh, look at that. Just so nice. And a little handle on them. So wonderful. And the Hickok Model 270 function generator, which I've already shown on my channel once me playing around with it, making music from it, well, kind of music from it. This is actually really nice. I like this. It stays up on its own. Cool. But yeah, so... This stuff is really amazing. This one has a connector on the back. I haven't really looked at it yet. It's pretty cool. So I think this thing's from like the mid-1970s or so. Still works fine. I'm not sure about how accurate it is, but whatever, who cares? So we have attenuation, square wave, sawtooth wave, sine wave. And then the frequency ranges are like times one, so that's like 10 hertz at the most. Oh, whoops. That's. Right up to like 100 hertz, so it's barely hearable. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm actually thinking about... So I've been having this project since I was like 10 years old of wanting to try to make my own analog synthesizer. And it'd be kind of cool, I mean, if the back ports don't allow it, whatever that does, to add like a connector on the side, like a 25-pin serial port connector that would be able to hijack the front control panel. So I could plug this in to like this big thing that I'll build, like probably based around my old Hammond organ. Oh, and I should probably also take the parts from my old K-Pro and put that on there so we can have like we can have like a green monochrome screen running CPM that we can program that to do something on floppy disks. Oh, wouldn't that be so, so cool? And then, of course, since we have the connector, I could just like disconnect it and there would still be a function generator I could use for stuff. That'd be so cool. I'd probably call it something like the musical monstrosity or something. It sounds so fun. Not sure how to take it apart. I think I just... Well, I mean... If you, know how, if you don't know how to take it apart, first thing to do is just to unscrew everything you see. Whoa. Oh man. These are on here pretty tight. Oh. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> wait, what? Okay. Oh, look at that. Wonderful. Oh, nice. It's kind of cool. Well, since that is... <laughs> Pretty much that. Just gonna go ahead and tighten these back up. Because I didn't need to loosen those in the first place. That's a pretty cool looking MOSFET right there. That green one. I love looking at old stuff like this. Oh, there's actually a part number on that one. I love looking at old stuff like this because it's, it's always so foreign. It's always so interesting. The bottom is really simple. <laughs> like, really, really simple. 
This is amazing. Hickok. Looks like that's degrading a little bit. Rotting? Not really sure. These two transistors, I think, are connected together by the C-shaped copper heat sink. I, at least I think it's a heat sink. Who knows? I wonder what that was for. These switches remind me of our old 1985 Dodge Ram pickup truck we used to have. And the AC control system, actually I think it was a fan and the heater also, basically the, the cabin controls, had these types of switches on it. Except for they were not electric, they were vacuum controlled. Or they controlled the car via vacuum. So they had like these layers of, I think they're like a fiberglass material, and each one had a channel cut through it. And so when they were all squished together, they made like a vacuum circuitry where there was there was a vacuum pump on the engine and that would pull air out of it and so by slipping, switching one of these it would move like a plunger or something like that and like it would open a valve or something inside of it I'm not really sure how it worked but then that would like allow air to be sucked from a hose which would go and activate something and like turn on a fan or something like that it's like so weird we we got we had to take it apart once and it almost never went back together we finally got it together like um, a year before we sold it though but yeah it just it reminds me of that funny enough because we couldn't get that thing back together cuz such a complex little thing on the other one we used to have to hit like four buttons at a time to get the defrost to turn on so that was that was interesting oh well this is such a nice little case I like it it is a shame that it relies on these little plastic clips I mean I, I could see that breaking very easily as the thing ages but it hasn't so far and it's like what 30 some or actually actually it gets me like 40 some years old So there we go, the Hickok Model 270. Well, now let's, at, let's look at the Hickok Model 217. This thing's weird. I'm less interested in this one because it doesn't make funny sounds, but oh well. Plus, I don't usually have to analyze semiconductors, so I don't know. I might not, I might not use this one as much, or I might repurpose it, but it'd be nice to keep it like it is because it looks nice, and it probably is pretty useful. So this one has a lot less controls on, on the front than the other one does, but it's more of a specific purpose, you know, it's for testing something, not like generating something. So I assume I'd use it is just you take a transistor and pop it in there and it would tell you if it was good or not. Probably have to like tell it which like version or whatever it is. Or actually, I guess, I guess no, if it was germanium, it would register on that scale. If it was silicon, it would work on that scale. That makes sense, I guess. That's interesting. Then, of course, if you have a bigger transistor, maybe you just pull the three wires out and hook it on there. At least that's how I think it is. This is kind of cool. Well, in the back, as you've already seen, I think, it opens up. So you can have a line, or you can have a battery. So, evidently, um, yeah, it looks like that's a 9 volt battery, so this doesn't have to have main, mains power. This can run off of a 9 volt battery. So that's pretty cool. A little inspection. So if this is able to have this such, such an open area, I mean, this thing's probably so simple. I'm really curious to see inside now. So... Start unscrewing. No, it seems like it's a little different this time. Maybe it comes up. Hmm. Well, the bottom should come off nonetheless. Oh, there we go. Wow, this is really simple. So we have a power supply, a little meter, a little capacitor here, a little resistor not going anywhere. That's interesting. I don't know. Maybe someone's been modifying this. I wouldn't doubt it. It's probably really appealing to hobbyists. Should be doing that. I don't think it should be hitting that, right? That's weird. Oh well. 
There's like almost nothing here. Actually, you know what? There is actually a couple things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I can see it inside of here. Looks like there's six microchips in here. There's seven? Okay, move. that's odd. Maybe this is more complex than the function generator. I would have not expected that. That's weird. don't know how to take that out, but I don't feel like taking that out because I feel like I just probably break it, you know? You know, I'm kind of tempted, though, to take this apart and convert it into, like, a battery-powered, portable DC power supply. So you can have, like, just, like, a bunch of lithium-ion cells in here to give a bunch of power. Convert this to just a voltmeter, have a little dial, and have the voltage coming out. So you can have, like, 0 to 60 volts or something like that. Portable. Wouldn't that be cool? I don't know. I mean, I'd feel bad for taking this thing apart, though. But, oh well. I might find some other case that looks better for that, you know? Like, something I wouldn't feel so bad about taking apart. I think that's pretty good. So, I don't really know what else, what else to say about these, because I've never really had either of them. I haven't really had much of a use for a semiconductor analyzer, because I just, I don't do much, that much with transistors. I'm more like a relay and electron tube person. But, function generator, I've never had one of those, and I've always wanted one. So, can't wait to see what I get up to with this thing. I think I can do a lot of interesting little bits and bobs with this, and I'll probably use this in a lot of projects. Well, it's starting to get dark outside, so I think it's a good time to quit. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!